Hello everyone, welcome to Native Mobile Wits. In today's video, we are going to learn what actually happens when a user start any application in Android. How application has a main thread or a UI thread by default. Did you ever think that from where this main thread comes by default? We don't even write any code related to threading, right? But still, in the starting, we get one main thread. Did you ever think that how many threads are created when any application is start for the first time? Are there any threads or no threads are created at all? We need to create by ourselves. These questions can lead to a very detailed discussion and this is a very important concept as well because if you want to learn about coroutines or multi-threading, we need to understand from where threading actually starts. From where we get the main thread or UI thread in the first place. The first step, whenever a user starts the application, one new Linux process will be created. Okay. And this Linux process will have the unique ID. So we can just mark that this Linux process will have one ID. And this Linux process will have one thread. This is called thread of execution or our main or UI thread. This is by default created in each Linux process. Now understand this. Whenever a user is starting the application, we are getting one Linux process which is having one unique ID. And this Linux process is having the main default UI thread which is called thread of execution. Okay. So whenever your application will start, you will get one process first and this process by default will have one UI thread and this is where you get the main thread in your application and within this UI thread you will write the first line of code. Now let's say for example this application is having one activity okay one launcher activity is there so that launcher activity by default will be associated with this UI thread okay we got one activity. This launcher activity is associated with this UI thread itself in the starting. Now, let's say you want to start some another Android component. For example, you want to start a service or you want to perform some another action using broadcast receiver or anything else. You can start another thread from this main UI thread. Okay, from here you can again start another thread. Let's say you are starting another thread T1. You are starting another thread T2. Okay. So every Linux process by default has one UI thread and you can start many thread inside a process. So then if you started two more thread, so your Linux process will be like this this much will be your process for your application. For each application, there is one Linux process and this Linux process can have multiple threads. By default, it will give you one UI thread. But if you want to start another Android component in different different threads, you can create those different threads. But all of these thread will be this applications associated Linux process. Okay, that's how each application has one Linux process and this Linux process can have multiple threads or multiple coroutines for example. As of now, we have understood that one application will have one process and this process can have multiple threads. Okay, this is the truth for every Android application. Now, let's say if we have multiple application, so multiple process will be there, right? Let's say we have 10 application, 10 process will be created. These 10 process can have multiple threads, but in our Android device, memory is limited, right? So let's say we have a situation where Android OS want to terminate some of the process. That means Android OS want to terminate some of the running applications right so how we can make sure that if we run into some kind of situations so our application survives android os somehow doesn't kill our application how we can do that 
so for that we need to understand that how different process can survive now let's understand this for example let's say we have one android device this is our phone and this phone has let's say 10 mb memory okay and our applications are running multiple applications are running let's say app 1 app 2 and app 3 f4 f5 okay five applications are running and each of these applications is having its own process p1 and so on p5 there are five process as well okay each of these process let's say is taking 2 mb each of these process is taking 2 mb memory our phone memory is only 10 mb so entire phone memory is consumed at the moment because all of these applications are running some process are running and each process is taking 2 mb memory now let's say something happens some notification service is having some new notification or some other thing is happening in android os and android os want to take some memory out of these 10 mb so android os will kill any of these process okay to release this 2 MB memory, right? And if Android wants more memory, so let's say Android is looking for 4 MB or 6 MB. So based on that need, Android OS will kill some process out of these current running processes. Now we want to make sure that our application A1, this should survive somehow. If OS is going to kill some process out of these processes, we want to make sure that our application survives. So for that, what we can do? First of all, we need to understand that how different process survives the Android OS check. Okay. If we are having multiple process running at the same time, how we can make sure that our process somehow survives? So for this, we need to understand process termination algorithm. Process termination algorithm tells that process with the lowest importance will be killed. Okay. Let's say we have these different different process. So all of these process will have some different kind of components running, right? Some application can have a process which is having, let's say, some activity. Okay. Some activity is running. Some process can have a service running, right? So all of these things can be there. Now we need to make sure that our process, which we want to survive, has the highest importance then android os will not kill that process the highest importance is given to foreground process okay so let's write this the highest importance will be given to foreground process and in foreground process what things can be there foreground process can have a activity let's say if there is a activity which is in own resume that will be in foreground process okay and how one activity will be known resume let's say one application is there a1 and it has its own process p1 and this process is having one activity okay and this activity is in own resume that's the condition that means this application should be open in the phone this is a phone and if our app is open in this phone that means our app is in foreground state which is the highest importance process so if android os is going to kill some application and our app is in foreground process so android os will not kill our process it will find some other process with the lowest importance now the second highest importance process is visible process so if we have any visual process so in that case our application will have some kind of activity which will be in own pose state okay and there can be chances that some dialogue is shown so that means our activity should be in own pose state or there can be some kind of bounded service as well if we have a bounded service if we have some kind of dialogue shown or if we have any activity which is in own pose state so this will be given the second highest priority okay and 
if we have the second highest priority then android os will still check is there any process with the third highest priority next process will be service process so let's say if we have a application which has a process and that process can have a service running in the foreground so that process will be given the third highest priority if android os is trying to kill any process okay and the last and the lowest importance process will be the background process so if we have a application which is seen by the user long time ago and android os is trying to find the application to kill so android os will pick this background process first if we don't have any app with this process android os will pick someone from the service process if we have and if we also don't have the service process so android os will see is there any visible process which is the second highest priority if some app is there with dialog shown or bounded service android os will pick from this and if we don't have the visible process then android os will pick from the foreground process okay that's how the android process termination algorithm works we have four different process first priority second priority and third and four priority these four process are there i hope now you know that what happens when any user start any application what happens internally now you should be knowing that from where we get the main ui thread inside any application whenever a user start the application one linux process is created and within this linux process by default we get the main or ui thread which is created by android os itself okay and then within this main thread we can write we can start writing the code and within our android app process we can create multiple threads or multiple coroutine for example okay that's how the multi threading concept work in android application development and i also mention that how all of these process survives the process termination algorithm also we have covered and that's all about the needed theory the much needed theory and the concept which we needed to cover from the next video onwards we are going to start coding and we'll code all the things from the basic in coroutines first okay so i will see you in the next video if you enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe to my channel and do share it with your friends who are learning android application development thank you